Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I'm going to be presenting a full solo playthrough and rules explanation of Walking in Provence, a sequel to its somewhat simpler and leaner cousin, Walking in Verano, which actually I haven't played, but I hear is pretty good. As a matter of introduction, Walking in Provence is a game about taking award-winning and, more importantly, point-scoring photographs during a walking tour of Provence in the south of France. Now, the game plays over ten rounds. There are four distinct and separate phases in every round. First, you select a card from your hand of two cards and you place it in front of you so that it's either adjacent to, tucked under, or covering over one or more previously played cards. Essentially, if you're familiar with games like Honshu, Circle the Wagons, or Sprawlopolis, which is a game I introduced you to a couple weeks back, then you've got the idea. What makes Walking in Provence so special, and also so devilishly convoluted, I suppose, is the vast number of terrain combinations that makes every game of, of Walking in Provence so incredibly unique. So after placing your chosen card, you, you give your second card to your opponent on your left, face down. And then in phase two, you can move your phot uh, photographer to any empty meadow space on your board. Now in addition, you also have at your disposal a drone that can move and hover over a meadow to take breathtaking overhead shots. Phase three is where you try to take those special photos and race to score points according to seven different objectives. There are four green objectives over here, which are related to your uh, photographer, and three blue objectives down here, which are related to your drone. Finally, in the last phase, you draw a new card from the deck. You pick up the other card that was passed you from your opponent on your right, and these two cards form your hand for the next round. Due to the passing of the second card, it's possible you'll get to see a card you rejected earlier in the game, uh, possibly sooner rather than later when you're playing a two-player game. Now, I, today, for this solo playthrough, I should, I should say there are no official solo rules for Walking in Provence, so I sort of homebrewed something here, and I'll explain some of the details uh, later in the game, or maybe during the end game scoring, which, wow, end game scoring for this game, <laughs> that's, another, that's another story. Now, as you can see, you start with this little starter card, your photographer meeple goes on a little scooter, which is you can't see him, but it's underneath the little photographer, and then you 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 place your drone uh, randomly on one of the two meadow spaces that are on the card. Now you notice your starting card will also ha usually have one or two uh, uh, squares of lavender. Now, lavender comes in two varieties. There's horizontal lavender, which can be rotated into vertical, and there's vertical lavender, which can be rotated into uh, horizontal. And what uh, one big part of the game is that you want to get large swaths of vertical lavender together, large swaths of hor swaths is what I'm trying to say, of horizontal lavender together. You don't want vertical and and horizontal lavender side by side, because that's not pleasing to the eye. You're also trying to get large swaths of wheat, uh, especially if they're bigger than two by, uh, if they're two by two or larger, I think, because those score double points. But I'll, I'll talk about wheat scoring at the end of the game when I get there. Uh, anyhow, back to my introduction. Uh, the game ends after 10 rounds of play, as I said, at which time you move into the end game scoring, which, it, to put it kindly, is so nonsensically complicated that it turns a game that would normally be a 2 or a 2.5 on the BGG complexity scale 
into something closer to a 3 or even a 3.5. And then that's to put it politely. Uh, some might describe the end game scoring as something closer to Form 1040 or physics homework, but uh, anyway, I'll, I'll describe those details when we get there. For now, let's just get started. So here you see, this is my randomly chosen starting card. I think there are five in the game. There are 50 scene cards in the game, I, I guess. Uh, now, this game is not actually available yet in the United States and very hard to come by. And you could, my graphics are somewhat crude because I had to uh, scan these and Photoshop these cards from pictures and videos and other kinds of things, other resources that were available on the Internet. Um, they, I, I have not yet been able to buy the game because it's just simply not available. So here's my two card hand at the top. I'm not out to do especially well today. In fact, I have not played this game much. Uh, I think I played a half a game so far. So I really don't know what, exactly what I'm doing other than knowing the rules. So this is mostly going to be for demonstration purposes. I am going to start by taking this second card in my hand, which means this card is going to get passed to my opposing dummy player and uh, I'm going to take this card and rotate it I think 90 degrees this way and I'm just going to put it like that and what you what, so you see what I've already created are three squares of vertical lavender um, I could have done this just as easily and created three squares of horizontal lavender, but I've got more room to spread out uh, horizontally rather than vertically, so I'm just going to put it here. And that's really my first turn. Now, in round one, there's very little you can do scoring-wise, um, and I'll explain what all these scoring cards mean as I fulfill them. So for now, I'm going to skip the walking phase. I'm not going to move my drone or my photographer, and I'm, and I'm not going to do any scoring of, of uh, cards. And I'm just going to move on to round two. All right, so for the second turn, okay, I'm going to take this card, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees left. And, I'll, and I am going to put it here. All right. So I've created a patch of three wheat and a patch of three vertical lavender. And I've got a pizza shop down here. Um, you can see the little slice of pizza on top on the roof there. And... I am going to score this card, and I'm going to do it by uh, using my drone. So I'm going to bring the drone overlay. So the, this game comes with uh, two different Mylar overlays, one for the drone. Actually, there's two sets, uh, and there's it should have probably come with four sets but so that people don't have to share. But uh, it only comes with two sets of mylar. I suppose you could make additional sheets using laminate. Um, but anyhow, uh, you've got a 5x5 five five grid for your drone. And when you're taking photographs using your photographer, you've got a 3x5 five grid to work with. Now, the photographer, of course, can take photos to the uh, right. Uh, up above, to the left, or below. But you're trying to get certain things in the frame in order to put your marker on one of these cards. And I'm going to start by using my drone, because in this 5x5 five five grid surrounding my drone, now I, it, it is the walking phase, so I could move my drone, say, up here if I wanted to. And in fact, maybe I will, just to sort of get it out of the way, because I could still score from this uh, vantage point as well. What I'm trying to get, go for are these three vertical lavender and three squares of wheat 
because as you can see, in order to fulfill this blue objective, you need two, three adjacent lavender fields of the same orientation and three adjacent wheat fields uh, all within the single five by five grid of the drone. And you can see that I've done that. The, the arrangement of the lavender or the wheat doesn't have to be any particular, it doesn't have to look like this. You just have to have uh, three contiguously adjacent squares of vertical or horizontal lavender. Again, it doesn't have to be vertical lavender. It could just as easily be horizontal lavender. And three contiguously adjacent squares of wheat. So I have met these this requirement. And because I'm the first to come here, that's going to get me six points, which doesn't get scored until the end of the game. There is no point scoring during the game. I think I will leave it at that and move on to round three. Okay. And I think, no, well, I think these are two new cards. I haven't seen either of these. Here's a card with Sunflower. I think we're gonna, I'm gonna take this card. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees because you want large patches of wheat, I'm going to lay this card over these two squares because this one vertical lavender by itself is not really doing me any good. So I'm just going to overlay it and you can see the meadow replaces the meadow. I'm just going to do that and my program is now telling me that I can either leave it this way or I can tuck it under and if I tucked it under the card it would look like this. But I want the, the large patch of wheat, so I'm going to leave it like that, and then continue. And can I score anything? Now, once you have your marker on one of these cards, obviously you can't score that card again. So this is, this is now off limits to me, but the, the dummy player will eventually score this card using my the dummy player rules that I've come up with. I am going, yeah, I'm going to use my photographer, have him point that way. Actually, does that get me something? Yeah, it does. It gets me this card. Four adjacent, at least four adjacent wheat fields and one windmill in the three by five grid. There's my windmill. Obviously there's my patch of wheat. So that's enough to fulfill this card. I uh, Now I'm only fulfilling one card at a time, but you can do as many of these as you possibly can. And if uh, two or more players fill, want to fulfill the same card in the same round, then they both put their markers, if I recall correctly, in the top spot or whatever spot is next. Uh, each one of these has a little infinity symbol on the bottom spot. So the normally uh, the first player to, to fulfill this gets six will get six points. The second player to fulfill this will, will get four, and then any number of players can put their marker on the lower the lowest spot. Uh, and I think this game plays up to five. But for now, I'm going to move on to round four. This, when you're playing solo, this game moves really quickly, especially if you don't fall into the analysis paralysis trap, which can get pretty deep uh, the more cards you have in your layout. So we'll move on to round four. Oh, I have seen this card before. So this card is back. And maybe I'll use this to point out how sunflowers work. So I'm going to take this. Um, now, ideally, you want the sunflowers pointing north, like that. The sun is up here. So you want the sunflowers pointing toward the sun, and, because then each sunflower will score you two points at the end of the game. If the sunflower is pointing any other direction, then you're going to get minus three points at the end of the game. Now, how do I want to lay this out? I really want to get two 
my two shops. So I've got this pizza shop here, and then this tile has uh, an ice cream shop on it with a green roof. And to the extent you can get multiple and different shops adjacent to one another, there are four in the game. There is a coffee shop with, I think, a brown roof. There's a flower shop that has a purple roof. The, the pizza shop and the ice cream shop. If you, one by itself scores you one point, two of them scores you four points, three of them side by side in any fashion scores seven points, and if you get all four together, that little grouping by itself scores 12 points. So that's what I'm going to try to aim to do, at least for now. But unfortunately, my sunflower is pointing in the wrong direction. But that's fine. Later I can cover it up with another card and so I won't get negative points at the end of the game. But more 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 likely than not I'll just forget and we'll score negative points at the end of the game. But I'm going to leave my card like that. What can I score? Yeah, so I, yeah, I was trying to get this go for this one. So obviously I can't get the two adjacent shops now when you go for this card the shops don't have to be the, different they can be the same they just have to be side by side but the different shops will get you additional points at the end of the game so in order to solve this problem i'm going to move during the walking phase now i'm going to move my photographer here once you start scoring and you move on to the scoring phase then you can't move your guys around any longer so you've got this there's a certain amount of planning that's involved in this game but to keep things simple for now this is really all I'm going to do so I'm going to go for this card which says I have to have four adjacent wheat fields in frame and two adjacent shops of any type in frame I've, I've proven that I have met that obje uh, objective so I am going to score this card and I don't think I can do anything else. These two, two require a church. I think I started the game with a church, but I haven't seen it since. So presumably it's over there on my dummy player's board. The dummy player's not actually creating a board, but he keeps one, he or she keeps one tile at random and then passes the other one back to me, which is why I can see a card that I, a, a card that I reject come back to me later. Anyway, I was looking to see if I can fulfill anything else. I no longer have a big swath of lavender, so this card's off limits. This one is, requires a church, and this requires five lavender, so I'm done for now. I'm moving on to round five. Almost halfway done. Didn't get a church. I think because I want a large swath of lavender, I'm going to take this card and I'm going to overlay it like that. And now I've got my five spots of lavender. Yeah, so this will work. Probably see this coming. Uh, now, again, my program is prompting me saying I can overlay or tuck under this card, in which case I'd end up with that. But that's what I wanted to accomplish, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to bring my photographer over here, have him point that away. And now I'm meeting this objective, which says I have to have five adjacent lavender fields of the same orientation, one or the other in frame and I've got five adjacent vertical lavender here that's going to allow me to score this card and like I said I don't have a church so this is off and can I do this I don't think so because my big patch of lavender is up here and my windmills down here now this is a drone card uh, where's my drone and I can't move it any longer I didn't move it but I don't think I could have pulled this off anyway, because if it was there, well, yeah, I don't have the windmill in frame. If I move it over, if I had moved it over here, I don't have four adjacent squares of lavender in frame. 
Uh, so yeah, that wasn't going to be doable in this round. So I'm just going to move on to round six. And I got another card with another shop and another and another card with another windmill. But I'm going to go with the card with the other shop. I think this is different. What is this one? A uh, well, this is the flower shop again. Not great. Not great high resolution scan so that's a flower shop but I'm gonna lay it in like that so so far I've got three shops different shops side by side gonna go with that and can I do any scoring here I don't think I can do this one still um, Four lavender, yeah, it's the same situation. Three lavender there, four lavender there, but no windmill. So um, can't do anything uh, scoring wise. So I'm going to move on to round seven. I got a coffee shop that's the fourth shop so I think I can rotate this like that and bring it in like that now that the only drawback to this you could see is that I've got vertical and horizontal lavender side by side which is only going to score me negative points Suppose I did that. That doesn't really help. Uh, I'll just plan on uh, overlapping that with a with another card. I've got three more cards to play with in this game. Three more rounds. So for now, I'm just going to stick with this. I'm not going to be able to get a photo, but I have locked in. I'm not going to uh, tuck that. Obviously, I am going to just stick with that. And this is good for 12 points if it doesn't get disturbed. Now, this is good over here for one point. Each one of these is, uh, will score. This is another ice cream shop up here. That's good for one point as well. But this uh, cropping of four different shops is good for uh, 12 points. Let's move on to round eight. No church. Where are all the churches? Uh, probably should have kept the one I started with, but especially because there are two cards here that require a church. But I wasn't planning. Um, can I? I'm going for this one. Uh, let's see. If I, I need another cropping down here. Yeah, I can take either one of these. I suppose I should take the one with the shop, but then I'm going to end up with negative points for having this rotated uh, the wrong direction again. So I'm just going to go with this card. Well, let's see. What does that look like? If I put the oh yeah, that's the wrong orientation. So that doesn't that doesn't work. This one, when rotated, will be correct. So, yeah, that's what I want to do. Now I've got a big patch of, oh, I still have this ugly little mismatched lavender down here, but I've got a patch of five lavender. So if I bring my drone down here in the walking phase or the flying phase, with the overlay on, you can see that I now have four swath uh, four, four squares are adjacent of uh, lavender i've got my windmill and i've got my sunflower pointing south but that's fine for this part uh, for purposes of scoring these cards so i'm good to score this card now and now i've scored every card except the two that require a church so until i get a church there's not much i can do now i've been talking about 
fulfilling these objectives, but like I said, there's lots of other things you want to be going for. You want big swaths of lavender. You want big swaths of wheat. You want to be sure that your sunflowers are facing north. You want to have swaths of forest, um, if possible, although in and of itself, that doesn't score you points unless uh, one of the, uh, unless you have a goal card like this. Set, uh, now these goal cards are uh, majority cards, so the person who ends the game with the most windmills on their board is going to get six points. Person in second place with at least one windmill is going to get three. Player with the largest uh, contiguous area of forest is going to get six. Second place will score three. Uh, so that's another way to score. The adjacent shops I talked about. Um, so the only there's only two ways you can get negative points. That's by having mismatched lavender and sunflowers that are not pointing north. Other than that, um, I still haven't talked about the complexities of the wheat scoring, but I'll, I'll talk about that. We're two rounds away from the end of the game. So let's, uh, let's move on to round nine. Oh, finally, I got a church. Ugh. Unfortunately, it's in the middle of the card, which is going to make things rather difficult. So in order to do this, I need to have two adjacent two adjacent adjacent shops, a church fully in frame. It can't be half and half. It's got to be fully in the frame in the grid. I've got the windmill and I've got at least one square of forest over here. The question is, how am I going to get the church? There's not a lot of places for me to fit this. Now, if I put this in here, oh yeah, it's in the middle, so I can't I can't cover up obviously a token, so I can't put the card like that. I could do that. Now this, uh, if I'm looking at this at the same time, let me cancel for now. Uh, I want to try to get a church to adjacent shops and a sunflower in frame for my photographer. So in that case, I can still aim to try to get the church down in there. And maybe with the church, I can cover up some of this mis mismatched lavender as well. So let's take this again and Maybe rotate it. Well, let's see what happens if I do that. Yeah, that's that's the wrong direction. But if I do something like that, oh wait a second. So then this has to get into frame. If I do that, I cover up one of my shops. I can do that, but then I'm not covering up my the bad lavender. Uh so the shop is worth what? Uh, worth five points. The two, well, there's only one, there's only one mismatched lavender there, this one and this one. So that's minus three. So that's a net loss of two points if I do that. If I do that, I also, I'm also, you know, let's just, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get, I don't think I can arrange this so I can get both the photograph and the drone shot simultaneously in this round. But it doesn't really matter because black, my, the dummy player has already claimed both of these. Uh... And in the end of this round, it will also claim this one, but it'll get second place. So it doesn't matter that I can't get both of them. I can just get the last one possibly next turn. But maybe I can do this. Need a church, two shops. If I move, if I go with my photo, 
I take the photographer and eventually plan to move him to this meadow spot over here, then I'll get the church, I'll get the two shops, and I'll get the patches of sunflowers. So I can get both both cards scored this round. Um, I'm still debating, do I want to do that or that? I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. But I would like to cover up that. Well, that's three squares of horizontal lavender. I'd leave it like that. Yeah, maybe that's the best bet. Yeah, uh, let's just stick with that. Okay, so I will bring my photographer over here. I gotta get everything in position first. Score that. And now that is gonna point this way and score that. So I've got all seven of the scoring cards in nine rounds, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, I don't have big patches of forest anywhere. I still have sunflowers that are pointing in the wrong direction. At least I don't have any mismatched lavender. And I haven't really collected any number of windmills. I've got one that I can see. So in that respect, this is probably not going to be that good, but I have gotten a lot of these cards, so uh, I think I'll do all right. Let's go into the tenth and final round, and I want to try to get not a whole lot. Of, well, it has a windmill, so that's going to help with this card, but it's not going to be enough to score the six. I think my uh, in my little. Um, solo variant, I have to have at least four windmills in order to get the six points. And I think I have to have at least four adjacent forests to get the six points, which I'm clearly not going to have. Uh, so I've got two. Suppose I tuck this under like that. Yeah, that works. So I can tuck this card under like that instead of doing, well, actually it doesn't matter because I can lay it over. No, if I lay it over, I end up with that. If I tuck it under, I have that. So that's what I'm going to do. The pro my program is now giving me the option to uh, overlay it, which is what I, which is this result. But if I under, if I tuck it under, I get this result, which is much better because now I've got a patch of four horizontally splayed lavender and I've got a patch of four of five vertical lavender up here and that's about as good as it's gonna get um, so I didn't do too badly let's uh, end the game and now I'll talk about the needlessly complicated uh, end game scoring um, yeah I'm Done. I have no photographs to take, so I'm done. 83. Wow, that's better than I expected. Uh, so, lavender scores in three ways. You're going to take your biggest swath of vertical lavender, and you're going to get your biggest swath of horizontal lavender, and the bigger of the two is going to score one point per square, and the smaller of the two will score two points per square. And this was a this was a great little uh, matchup at the uh, in the last round because it made it gave me a big swath of horizontal, well, relatively big swath of horizontal. So th this is the smaller of the two. This is only four. So this is going to score two points per square. That's eight points. This one scores one point per square. That's five points. And then you get minus three for every place in your layout where you've got horizontal next to vertical. And I was able to avoid all that. So my lavender scores me 13 points. 
We is a different story. So like I said, you want at least two by two squares of wheat. Uh, and the more of that you have, the better, because that scores double. Wheat by itself scores nothing. So these single wheat squares score no points whatsoever. This is going to score five, and this will score two, which is how I got seven. But if, for example, let's say I had a, a wheat here, I'm just going to fudge here. This would score, well, well, it's not two by two, but if I had another one here, uh, I don't want to disturb my little patch of lavender, but if I had another wheat here, then this patch of two by two would score eight points, two points per square as part of the eight by two. These three would still score one point. These, of course, score nothing. And these two would still score two. So uh, that's how that how wheat works. And it, it really should have been streamlined. It's a little too complicated. Uh, and it was a bear to, for me to program, uh, but uh, and I didn't even score any two by two or larger swaths of wheat. Like I said, north-facing sunflowers score two points each. I only had one, and every uh, sunflower pointing away from the sun in any direction scores minus three. I had two of those, minus six for sunflowers with a net of minus four. Didn't do too well there. Uh, I've got uh, one, one shop up here. That's one point, a shop here, and a shop here. Those are three. But I maintain my collection of four here, so that's 12 for a total of 15 points for shops. And I scored all seven photo cards, five, seven, six, eight, six, eight, and six. Uh, and then for the goals, I came in second place with, uh, what did I end up with, two windmills? And uh, I came in second place because I have at least one forest, which isn't hard to do. So I got three points for that. It's a two-player game, so I'm guaranteed to get six or three points. Ended up with a total of 83, and that is how walking in Provence works. I don't have a very good French accent, so I apologize for that. But this is a pretty cool, cool game, and I like uh, how, these, uh, how these grids work, um, and I like... You know, it, there's a certain amount of uh, landscape. It's a, this kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the colonists, uh, because you're gonna you're trying to plan ahead and you got to move everybody into position. And then you also the other interesting factor is that you may not have a shot planned. Uh, you may not have a shot uh, uh, set up correctly because there's no meadow where you can put the photographer or the drone that gets the right shot. But depending upon how you place the new card, if it has a meadow on it, you can create a new place for the drone or the uh, photographer to move into. That might let you score the points you need to get the photograph that you're aiming to get. Lots of interesting parts of this game. Like I said, endgame scoring kind of is a blemish, but uh, there's so much variety here with the different kinds of lavender and the wheat and the sunflowers and the different shops and so forth. There is a lot of variety. I guess they wanted to make sure that everything scored to some degree or another. Uh, I like the fact that certain things score negative. So there, there are a lot of uh, the, the, the positives clearly outweigh the negatives of this game and the only big negative is the fact that it's not yet available but eventually it will be highly recommended walking in Provence thanks for watching everybody hope you uh, subscribe like uh, the video subscribe to my channel obviously I write all these programs for uh, my personal enjoyment um, and uh, Go to my geek list. You can see all the different uh, videos I've presented over the years, all the different programs I've created. Um, next in line is going to be Maharaja, which I'll be filming probably in the next day or two. For now, bye-bye. Thanks for watching.